hip versus knee dominance. We're talking about hip extension, which is this action at the hip, and knee extension, this action at the knee. So when I talk about hip versus knee dominance, I'm talking about the comparison of strength of hip extension versus knee extension, okay? Now, I'm not talking about directly measuring hip extension torque and knee extension torque. Rather, I'm looking at uh, does an athlete favor one or the other uh, in a multi-joint movement. So how do you spot hip or knee dominance? It's pretty simple. Hip dominant. It's going to be more hips back, going to shift the bar forward more. The bar is going to be located more directly above the knees. That's going to show up in a squat. It's also going to show up in a split squat. Okay? Same type of pattern. Knee dominant. It's going to stay more upright. They're going to go more knees forward in a squat. Okay? Same thing in the split squat. Stay taller, push the knee further forward. They're going to gravitate towards that type of movement pattern. From my coaching experience, I can say that you don't want to be especially knee dominant or especially hip dominant. All right, you want to have a good balance. Um, a little bit of hip dominance might be good athletically. Okay, now uh, how do you know where you're at? The squat is going to be a simple indicator. All right, so you're going to do a um, elevated heels high bar squat, um, trying to keep your torso upright all the way down and up. Okay, and you're going to look at the bar path from the side. And that's going to show you uh, how your hip and knee extension torque uh, compare to each other. So I'm about to show a video that I made in the past that addresses this topic. Uh, one thing I'll say is that the theoretical ideal squat is uh, really something that's only going to be attainable for a somewhat knee dominant person. Okay, so if you're a sprinting and jumping athlete, don't obsess over having like the perfect squat. Uh, rather just if you're significantly hip dominant then just try to move in that direction over time. Looking at a squat from the side, think of the femur as a lever that's rotating at the knee. Think of the torso as a lever that's rotating at the hip. Now we know when rotating a lever, if the load is moved further from the axis of rotation, it will be harder to rotate that lever, right? It will require more torque. So we have this theoretical ideal squat position where the bar is going to stay uh, almost directly above the ankle and then the horizontal distance to the knee and the hip are about equal so it's a balanced squat. Now most people have stronger hip extension than knee extension so when a squat on the way up they'll shift the load forward to make it further from the hips and closer to the knees so you're requiring less torque at the knees and more at the hips and that matches their strength. Trying to shift your squat mechanics closer to the theoretical ideal over time will benefit you athletically. You can work on that by using lots of light sets where you're focused on form and also using uh, other exercises which are very knee extension focused. So I'm actually a good example here. I'm naturally uh, hip dominant, like pretty, pretty significantly. So my natural tendency is to shift the bar forward and be like directly over my knees. Um, over time, I've been able to get stronger quads, get stronger knee extension torque and, uh, and balance my squat out. And that has helped me athletically and it's helped me get uh, healthier knees. Ah.